No! Become an SEO. No! I will stay a developer forever. Hello and welcome to another episode of SEO Fairy Tales. With me today is Roxana Stingo, who is the head of SEO and search at Alamy. You also play a lot of Minecraft in your free time, and you used to do competitive Scrabble for the, uh, what was it, Romanian Scrabble Federation? Yeah. Ho, ho. How did you get into competitive Scrabble? Oh, um, it's actually a funny story. We used to play in the back of a bar, and my dad wanted to meet with his friends to have a beer, and he would just drop me off to play Scrabble. Wow, OK, that's, that's pretty cool. And then you just made that a thing into the, OK. Competitive Scrabble, that sounds fun and yeah. tricky. Another thing that is fun and tricky is technical SEO. That's what we're going to talk about today. What kind of challenge uh, did you experience that you would like to talk about today? Yes, so um, we have a very old website. It's been online for about 20 years. That's it's awesome. A, That's a not a bad thing. On .NET platform. Mm. And we're now trying to you know, improve it, make it faster, and we're moving it to React. Ooh, wow, that must be a challenge. Like a 20-year-old website into React, that sounds like a big undertaking. It is. But um, another thing about Alamy, it's a massive website. Mm -hmm. We have 300 million products because we sell stock photography. A million, wow. Yes. But good thing is, everything is a template. So most pages okay. are just a couple of templates, and that's it. So that makes it a bit easier. We're trying mm -hmm. to also adopt um, SPA, single page application, mm -hmm. to make it faster for our users, but also because it is templated. It, so it works well. All right. You're using React. You want to build a single page application. So you're probably going to choose client side rendering. Yes and no. OK, good. Good answer. Yes. <laughs> so we're doing server side for all bots, mm -hmm. and we're doing client side for our clients, but we're keeping parity between the two. Dynamic rendering, then? Yes. Ooh, all right. And what happened? Where did this not go smooth and well? So um, we do all our checks on staging. We try to catch as many bugs as we Good can stuff. before anything goes live. We want to make sure we optimize all the uh, meta tags and all the content is the same after we do the move mm -hmm. and all the internal URLs and the assets and everything. So when doing these staging checks, we realized something was wrong because our crawler was showing us um, what we, um, maybe I should go back a bit. So we're we're now moving our search pages. Yes. Um, and these are pages um, that return images for a, a key a term. Given yeah. term, yeah, or query. But because we have so many images, uh, we have a set of results that's usually very large. So we yes. split it by um, 100 results per page, and we use pagination. So this would be the equivalent of any category page on an e-commerce mm -hmm. website. Works the same way. When uh, we were checking um, the new React implementation, um, our crawler was showing us certain results for page two, three, four um, of the paginated series, but our manual checks were showing us different results. So manually, we were seeing in React what coincided with the live website, mm -hmm. so what we wanted to see. Yeah. But during the crawl, we didn't. So we were trying to figure out, why would there be a difference? Right. And when you say you checked manually, you mean like you, you visited the website with a certain user agent? or yes. so, right, um, And that did not dif differ from what users were seeing, but differed from what the crawler was seeing. So as a regular user and as Google bought in mm -hmm. the browser using a user agent yeah. emulator, it, it looked um, completely fine. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when crawling with one of our crawler, crawler tools, um, it, it looked completely different. Which tool was that? Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog. All right, and okay. Hmm. I already have like a few ideas of what might have been going wrong, but I don't know. So 
So what, what did you do to figure out what was happening? Or could you figure out how to reproduce it to begin with? So yeah, that's the hard part, because we mm. could only do it in the crawlers. So ah, even if we talked true. to our QA, it was, yeah. um, you know, like, have to use the works. crawlers to yeah. see it. Exactly. So then um, I, I'd be lying if I said it was me who actually figured it out. It was somebody in my team. Mm -hmm. can be more proud of her. Um, and she said, OK, what's different between what we're doing in the browser and what we're doing in the crawler? Mm -hmm. We're using Googlebot as a user agent in both. What would be the difference? And then something um, you know, made her think, maybe it's cookies. Oh, see, that was not even in my list of hypotheses. All and right. And that's usually not in any SEO's list of hypotheses, because we don't really pay attention to cookies, do we? No, we not know, really. Um, Googlebot is not going to pick our website cookies anyway, Correct. so we don't care about them. Yeah. But this is where the difference was. Even though we were simulating Googlebot in the browser, the browser does store cookies. So then the, the way pagination was showing was dependent on those on. cookies. Pagination dependent on cookies. That is wild. All right. <laughs> it is not, actually, because I did, I, I did a bit of Googling. Um, <laughs> and it turns out a lot of developers use this as a solution to create pagination. So it's not really far-fetched from oh, a development point okay. of view. OK, fair, yeah. But um, from an SEO fair. point of view, we don't think about it. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, from a developer point of view, I've never thought of using cookies for pagination. But OK, so what, what did they do exactly there? Like, How did that work? So our internal search engine um, is very complex, as you can imagine, to handle so many products. Yeah. Um, and it stores different values for the search and the filters mm -hmm. um, in these parameters. Mm -hmm. And we pass those on as a cookie. Um, that Rather than in the URL parameters. Yeah. Oh. And we use that to kind of determine what's the search and what page number do we mm -hmm. need from that result, from that set. Mm -hmm. And then we pull it in. Which means that if the cookies are missing, you are seeing very different things and probably not. How did that manifest? Like, What did you see when you were using the crawler? So uh, page one, the first mm -hmm. page of results was identical in both cases. But uh, page two in the crawler was showing completely different results than mm -hmm. what we had on live or something. But not like page one, again, it was just showing completely different. No, page one was fine in both cases. Right. But it's then just like, the pagination. Okay. But it wasn't showing the same for all the different pages when cookies were not present. No. Uh, so it was randomly yeah. picking results instead of picking the ones that it should have. So I'm not quite That's sure. Wild. I, I'm sure it wasn't random. There must have been Yeah, a logic. there must have we been just, some logic. Yeah. It's just hard to determine the logic. Yeah. Kind of. Interesting. How did do you know how your coworker figured this one out? Was it just like a hunch, like a Eureka moment, like, oh, cookies? Or did they did they use some sort of tool or process? Or how did they come up with the solution that it is? Well, she thought um, initially, what's different between um, you know a user and Googlebot? And, what would and, be and that's 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 the only thing that she needed to figure out. Like, wait a minute, cookies. Yeah, because wow. Googlebot would not store cookies while enough, the user yeah. would get them in the browser. But like just coming up with that idea is awesome. That's really really cool. Sweet. All right. So yeah, you identified cookies to be the culprit. Then what happened next? Because you needed to resolve the problem. So once we knew it was cookie related, we pass on that information to our QA team. Mm -hmm. And we told them, this is what we're seeing. This is what we're expecting to see instead. And we think it's cookie related, because the moment we clear our cookies and refresh the page, we get the correct results. Mm -hmm. All right. And then they were like, oh, yeah, it is cookies. And then developers had everything that they needed? Or was there like a conversation that was necessary to get developers to choose a different solution? They, um, um, they told us, OK, we use cookies. We pass this um, query the term into, from the parameter yeah. from the internal search engine. We do pass it on, and then we look at that. And if it has a value, we then look at the page number we're requesting and get it from that um, result set. Mm -hmm. But um, we told them we can't do it that way, because mm -hmm. Googlebot is not going to store that cookie. And not just Googlebot, I mean, any bot is not yeah. going to store that cookie. So we need a different way of doing it. So we do get parity between yeah. user and bot. How did they achieve that? Did they switch to URL parameters, or? It, it was actually a very simple um, fix. If you look at the code, it, it, it's just they added a condition where they do accept that the, the query term, that parameter, is passed on as null. So it's not actually uh, ah, passing that was, on that any was values. all that was necessary. And that was it. 
a very simple solution, I might say. Okay, that is amazing. That's really, really cool. So just to recap, you were seeing something that happened only in the crawler, not in manual testing, even if you switched the user agent. Yeah. And then you were basically like looking at, OK, so your coworker was looking at, OK, so what's different between the crawler and the Googlebot as well and, and the normal user? And that is how you determine, oh, it must be something that happens in the browser that doesn't happen in the crawler or bots, cookies being one of them. Yeah. Could have been something else, to be honest, but it was cookies in your case. And then you verified that by deleting your cookies and saw the same thing. So you basically established a baseline truth before you went on. And then you could use that to get the developers to fix it. And the fix in this case was just to be more lenient to what they expected or yeah. ac accepted as, as data from cookies. That is a wild ride. It is, because I, I don't think it's the kind of bug that I will ever see again. Or maybe Probably. most people will never see again. But things like this do happen once they in do. a while. So it's good for us to kind of keep in mind cookies are being used. Just generally, I think the, the thing that a lot of people are not super aware of is you need to know the differences between the different platforms, as in like crawlers, bots, your actual browsers. And even within browsers, it could be like someone disables cookies. There are plugins in browsers that make you disable cookies for privacy reasons, for instance. And then these users would see the same wrong behavior, which you don't want. So that's that's really, really cool. And it's a good reminder to always think about like where could be edge cases that you might not foresee. Uh, and then basically go on this wonderful treasure hunt. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's really, really cool. All right, Roxana, that has been a wild ride uh, through a murder mystery of cookies, basically screwing up your internal search engine uh, result pages. I think that was a really interesting story because it does remind us to like be very careful about like how different different settings can affect our, uh, our products. Um, you all out there, let us know if you had similar issues that were very surprising or were caused by browsers behaving different than crawlers and what these were in the comments. Also, leave us a like and uh, do subscribe to Search Central on YouTube here um, if you want to see more of our content in the future. There's more episodes coming up as well. And thank you so much, Roxana, for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. And uh, all of you out there, thanks for watching. And stay safe, take care, and bye bye. On the dark side, we have cookies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>